How do you achieve seamless cross-platform testing? What does it take to become a tester 4.0? And have you seen the open source test automation framework for Salesforce projects that uses Playwright? If not, find out in this episode of the Test Skill News Show for the week of November 17th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. So I recently saw an update for a tool called Squish that a large enterprise company I used to work for used to automate some really complex testing scenarios. And it made me think that using tools like this, achieving seamless cross-platform testing doesn't have to be complex. And I think using a tool like Squish really would help a lot of testers because it provides a powerful solution for automating UI tests across all major operating systems with robust support for Java, Windows, mobile applications, and more. And by integrating Squish into your development pipelines, you could streamline workflows with CI/CD capabilities and version control, and also accelerating your deployments while ensuring product quality. And I think using a tool like this allows your teams to focus on more strategic tasks because Squish handles the repetitive testing process, enhancing productivity, and increasing test coverage across all the things you thought you couldn't automate. So explore the benefits of Squish and start your free trial today using the special link down below. And speaking of automating complex testing scenarios, make sure to check out our Test Guild webinar of the week with two of my go-to Uber, and I mean Uber automation AI experts, Jonathan Wright and Jason Arbin. At this webinar called Tester 4.0, The Journey to Becoming a Testing Superhero, you'll discover the skills you need to stand out in today's fast-paced software testing world and become a true testing superhero. At this webinar, you can learn how to really leverage AI-powered tools and how they're really changing the testing process, making it easier, faster, and more efficient. And you're also going to gain valuable insights into best practices that can enhance your testing strategy, drive continuous improvements, and ensure high-quality software delivery. And you're going to get it from two experts that really know their stuff. These are hands-on experts that really will show and demonstrate how AI is the real deal for certain testing conditions. So don't miss this opportunity to level up your testing game with the latest in AI and testing innovations in here from two legit, no BS experts about the future of automation testing. Register now using the link down below. Hope to see you there. And speaking of Jason Arbin, he recently posted a cool AI study about how AI shows major impact on scientific research, highlighting the future of human AI collaboration. And he mentions he's seen the same thing as well. So this study at a major US research lab reveals how AI is transforming scientific discovery and human workflows. The research conducted across 1,018 scientists demonstrates that AI-assisted teams discovered 44% more new materials and increased patent filings by 39%. The study shows AI primarily automated idea-generated tasks, shifted human focus to elevation and judgment roles, Scientists now spend 40% of their time evaluating AI suggestions, up from 23% previously, while time spent on initial idea generation dropped from 39 to 16%. Notably, the research found that AI effectiveness heavily depends on human expertise. So what does that mean? Well, top performing scientists saw that their output nearly doubled when working with AI, while those with weaker evaluation skills struggled to identify promising AI suggestions. And this key differentiator was domain knowledge and experience, not technical AI expertise. So what does this mean for testers? Well, just like the study points out, I think you need to get ready for how your role is about to evolve as a tester. You want to make sure you invest in domain expertise, even as AI tools become more and more popular. Strong judgment skills and identifying valid test cases will become more valuable than the ability to actually write test cases from scratch. But success will depend on the ability for you to effectively evaluate and prioritize AI suggestions. Definitely a study that you could take a deep dive on. Read it for yourself. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. So a common thing you probably struggle with is how do you choose between speed, quality, and cost in test automation? Well, this next article might help. It's by Milan, and he goes over the ongoing debate of balancing speed, quality, and cost in test automation and how many organizations face challenges when deciding which aspects to prioritize. And his article outlines that while test automation is crucial for accelerating software delivery, there's often a trade-off between achieving the highest quality, maintaining rapid delivery times, and managing costs effectively. And he goes on to mention how these decisions impact the overall success of software testing projects. And quality assurance experts highlight that automated tests are faster and often 
more reliable when initially created. However, maintaining these tests can be costly and time-consuming as software changes occur. Speeding up automation efforts might lead to quality issues if not handled correctly or carefully. So conversely, overly prioritizing quality can drive up costs and delay projects. So what do you do? Well, an ideal approach that's outlined involves a strategic mix that aligns with your organizational goals and acknowledging that compromises are sometimes necessary. So software testers should really recognize that while striving for speed, it's tempting in fast-paced environments, quality must not be overlooked. The key is to really strategically balance all three elements, speed, quality, and costs, based on your team's specific needs for each of your projects. Also, another post that caught my eye was by Gleb, and his latest goes over code coverage on the fly, which explores the innovative approach of generated code coverage metrics on the fly, utilizing modern testing tools and methodologies. Traditionally, software development teams generate code coverage reports after running a full suite of tests, which can be time-consuming and resource-intensive. If this is you, you're in luck because Gleb actually introduced an alternative method where code coverage is calculated dynamically during test execution. And this technique not only provides immediate feedback, but also optimizes the development workflow by highlighting untested code areas in real time. And by implementing live code coverage, developers can focus on writing tests for overlooked code sections more efficiently and improve overall code quality. Gleb always delivers, and he doesn't disappoint once again in this post as well. So definitely check it out. All right, so as you know, I'm always looking for new tools. So this next LinkedIn post grabbed my attention. It was by Yugesh, who introduced a test automation framework tailored for Salesforce projects utilizing Playwright. And this framework, now available on GitHub, integrates a suite of features aimed at streamlining the testing process and supporting seamless Salesforce functionality. And looking over the GitHub repo, it looks like it has a bunch of key features like Salesforce API integration, user impersonation, Excel integrations, page objects model, Cucumber BDD implementation, GitHub workflows and credential management, centralized Playwright configs, mobile web automation, utility methods for constant verification, Jira integration, and a bunch more. So if you're a tester working on Salesforce projects, this framework looks like it offers a robust solution that could help you streamline your testing process and the automated features, especially the Salesforce API integration and user impersonation addresses common testing pain points that I hear all the time that could potentially free up your time and resources for deeper quality checks. Definitely a tool to check out for yourself and see if it helps you as well. So for some reason, I know a lot of testers and developers that are trying to get into management. It's not something I always wanted, but I know, but I do know that testers and developers, when they do enter this role, don't have many resources. So I was happy to see this post by Steven, who goes over, help, I just got promoted to engineering manager. What do I do? And what I love about this post is that Steven offers insights and practical advice for new engineering managers navigating their fresh responsibilities. So Stephen addresses common challenges faced by new managers, such as understanding the new role, managing teams effectively, and adjusting from being an individual contributor to a leader. This article emphasizes the importance of communication, learning from peers, setting up clear goals for the teams, and maintaining a balance between coaching and delivery results. And Stephen also shares personal experience to illustrate how to overcome initial obstacles and succeed in your new career phase Really cool article. Thank you, Stephen, for this. You can find it down below. All right, as we enter Black Friday, a lot of people think just about holiday shopping for spikes in the traffic that can cause impacts onto their site performance, but they don't necessarily think about other things that can cause issues as well. One example is Netflix. So you probably heard Netflix recently faced significant streaming disruptions during the Mike Tyson-Jake Paul fight that took place last week, which impacted many users worldwide, which led to widespread user dissatisfaction with over 88,000 complaints reported on Down Detector. Also, I saw on social media platforms that they were flooded with negative feedback, which could potentially tarnish Netflix's image as a reliable streaming service. So why does it matter too as a developer or tester? Well, brand reputation is one, Getting all these complaints is not a good look for a streaming service. And two, lost revenue. While specific financial losses haven't been disclosed, the service outage during a major live event likely resulted in revenue loss from potential subscribers and advertisers. And for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head over to those links in the comments down below. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation Awesomeness. As always, test everything 
and keep the good. Cheers.